today I am going to talk about the fifth element of hip hop. Yes, right, and I am pretty sure that you will realize what I am talking about after this demonstration. <laughs> or YouTube, SoundCloud, or any other medium. <laughs> Not many. This is worse than expected. Well, very well, this permits me to say that beatboxing, every day, is an overt form of music, an overt form of art, and an overt form of talent. Beatboxing, as a matter of fact, is an indispensable element of the hip-hop culture, though the art is limited to it. Little did you know that even Michael Jackson and Justin Timberlake beatboxed themselves and incorporated it into their records. Though beatboxers possess respect and recognition in the hip-hop community, the talent, unfortunately, is often disregarded in the music industry as a whole. Now let us talk about how this art has evolved and I will try to illustrate whatever I say as we progress. Beatboxing, my friends, traces back to the mid-20th century, where African pygmies produced sounds by breathing in and out loudly. This technique is still used in beatboxing and this, in fact, helps in providing a great breath control. Interestingly, one of the most elaborate and critically acclaimed documentaries in the his history of beatbox is named The Breath Control. A beat which, go, uh, which incorporates breathing in and loud cloudy goes something like this. Now, beatboxing was primarily popularized by three human beatboxers, Dudley Fresh, Biz Markie, and Buffy Love. Now, honestly, history can be a bit humdrum. So, allow me to introduce you to one of the most popular beatboxing songs till date. 50 Cent, Tupac, Ice Cube, Will Smith, and even Eminem have rapped over these beats. Presenting to you, an excerpt from Dali Dali by Dali Fresh.
and this song was released in 1885 and beatboxing was at its apogee at that time. After that, however, the popularity of beatboxing decreased dramatically and that was when Razel came to the rescue. Razel, another pioneer in the beatboxing world, possesses this unique ability to sing and beatbox at the very same time. Here's an excerpt from one of his most popular songs. Push your mother only knew Push your mother only knew That you was trying to get me in Push your mother only knew That you was trying to get me in The thing here, the thing here is that the beats are incorporated right in the middle of words. Let's do this again. This is called a parenthesis in phonology. Since we are all used to hearing words as language obviously, when someone beatboxes this way, our mind processes the beats on one track and the words on the other and reads them simultaneously to give this this effect. Astonishing, isn't it? Now I previously stated that beatboxing is an overt form of art. Contrastingly, it is a subject of great amusement to the field of science. Various researches have been undertaken to solve this mystery behind these enigmatic moments in a beatboxer's mouth. And believe me, the findings are incredibly fascinating. Recently, a study was held at USC in Los Angeles where a group of scientists implanted scanners and cameras inside a beatboxer's mouth while did what he was best at. About 40 recordings were made, each lasting for about 20 to 40 seconds, while the beatboxer made several different percussion sounds at several different tempos, ranging from about 88 beats per minute to 104 per minute, beats per minute. It was found out that it is astonishing how anyone can have such control over various parts of the speech apparatus. The scientists were absolutely flabbergasted by the complex elegance of vocal moments as they themselves called it. And when I say that, I'm not trying to condescend or claim my superiority as you might be thinking. It's just some factual information. Now another interesting conclusion was drawn out from the same experiment and we'll come to that in a moment. Now since we all know English syllables, we all can say words like buttercup, obviously. How about we try it once? Buttercup. buttercup. Nice. And now if we remove the vocals to a certain extent, we get something like this. Now this gives us three simple fundamental percussion sounds. We can make a beat out of these three words. Uh, sorry. We can make a beat out of these three percussion sounds themselves. Let's take the word beatbox for example. Now we can create a beat from this single word itself. It goes something like this. I mean, believe me, when I can, everyone can. Now, as a matter of fact, you might have beatboxed previously without even knowing it. For instance, I'm sure that most of us, if not all, have produced a trill, a sound like r. That, when modified slightly, gives us the tongue bass, which is widely used in dubstep beatboxing. This is 
actually taken from Indonesian and African language. Now, another type of bass is the throat bass. This was generated while you were clearing your throat, just like I did when I walked up to the stage. That bassy sound which sustained gives it the throat bass. <coughs> So now you know how big boxes produce that so-called human noise. Another type of bass is the lit bass. That was what you generated when you were trying to imitate the sound of a scooter. Boom, boom. <laughs> and believe me, that precisely is the lit bass. <laughs> English language. Now, coming back to this story, it was found out that beatboxers have this ability to produce sounds even when they aren't a part of their language. For instance, the beatboxer in whom the research was conducted spoke just English and Spanish. However, he was able to produce sounds derived from inconspicuous languages of nations like Nigeria, Botswana, and British Columbia. Astonishing, isn't it? Now, while I'm beatboxing here, some of you, if not all, must be thinking, how does he do that? Why would he do that to his throat? Well, another research concluded that beatboxing may be actually good for the throat. Sounds bizarre. It does, to me as well. It was found out that beatboxing is actually good for the throat. To wipe away these eccentricities, let us compare the scenario of a singer and a beatboxer. Singers almost exclusively rely on their vocal cords, and that is a fact quite well known. Beatboxers, on the other hand, <coughs> keep their glottis open, which is actually protective of the vocal folds. Also, they control their pharyngeal muscles, which, which is actually protective of the vocal cords. Now, while beatboxing, the whole vocal tract is used, which proves that beatboxing is actually good for the throat. And just as a fun fact of sorts, it was also found out that singers, if they learn some such techniques from beatboxers, like controlling the pharyngeal muscles, it could actually help them in reaching higher notes as it takes away the stress from the vocal cords. Now, so long story made short, the conclusion is completely contradictory to what you might have thought. Another common misconception regarding beatboxing is that it is limited to only some genres of music. But as a beatboxer myself, I strongly disagree. From Chinese Kushi performances and Southern Indian classical music to contemporary hip hop music, vocal percussion is almost everywhere. To prove my point and to familiarize you with the variety that the art possesses, let me take you on a journey across different genres of music. Let's start with hip hop. This was the beat from the Powerpuff Girls theme song. Here's something straight from Bollywood. Just 
just in case you didn't count, I just took you through five different genres of music. And believe me, folks, there are many more. Now, being a beatboxer myself, I feel like beatboxing is not just about music and rhythm. It is much more to it. Beatboxing is a language, a universal language, which has this unique ability to transcend all boundaries. Honestly, I'm an introvert and I was hesitant and nervous before I started. But as I beatboxed and talked about my art, I felt like an abstract connection was established between you all and me. And now that this talk is coming to an end, I don't feel like going back to the wings. I have come to discover that beatboxing is an opportunity to connect and communicate. The very purpose of naming this talk the science behind beatboxing was to convey that beatboxing is an art which is much more comprehensive than what it looks. So the next time you hear someone beatbox, think of it as science, not just music. Thank you.